start with some good news. I have good news and bad news. The good news, I'm not going to bore you with a long speech because um, I have to go back and do the uh, 10 o'clock news. <laughs> this is like my lunch break. Uh, a lot of you maybe work the night shift and you know the situation, but this is my little break between the uh, newscast. The bad news, uh, I, I've really not had a chance to decompress over the last uh, three weeks, and I, I have not slept a lot. I'm emotionally exhausted, and I'll probably say something to make somebody mad. So I apologize in advance, but I, I want to just go through some thoughts on what happened uh, three weeks ago. And the, the talk I'm going to be giving you uh, is communicating emergency weather information in a post-broadcast world. That statement itself makes a lot of media people angry, but it is my opinion that the old broadcast model that we have had forever that has provided my family and myself a wonderful living for all these years, it's dead. Or it's in the process of dying, and something wonderful will come out of this. I think it's an incredible opportunity. I think for the young people that are in communication now, I think they can lay the groundwork for something that's fantastic. But my generation, the business model that has supported me and all of us, it's fading away. I believe it's post-broadcast. Uh, you know, anybody ever seen the movie Anchorman, okay? <laughs> Have you ever noticed the weather guys are retarded in every one of these movies, you know? <laughs> I ate a candle. I love lamp. Um, Brick Tamlin. Uh, but... It's over. And the truth is, a lot of people don't use this television news like they used to in the 70s and 80s. And I've been around here long enough. I lived this era. I started, I, I started doing weather on television here in 1979. I replaced Rosemary. Nobody in here knows who that is, but this was a long time ago. So some of you raised your hand. You've been around a long time too. <laughs> Remember Pat Gray? <laughs> Rosemary? Wow. Um, so... The situation is this. I want to say that I'm thankful to the owners of the uh, entity where I work for allowing me the freedom to be me. I, I think one of the things I encourage all of the media people to do is to allow us to have a little wiggle room. We're all unique, and we need that. Uh, we're owned by uh, the All Britain Communications family. It's a family mom and pop chain, if you will, one of the last in the country. They had a wonderful experiment a couple of years ago. They decided to rebrand their... Washington website. They have WJLA in Washington, the ABC channel, and News Channel 8, a 24-hour cable operation, as TBD.com. I thought it was brilliant. The, 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 the design was so clean. And, and maybe it's just me, but I thought, this is wonderful. This is where we need to go. And you can see the quote up on the screen from Robert Albritton, who is the uh, guy that runs the company. Basically, he, he states in that that the business model is dying. A lot of people don't use television news. We have to be better at what we're doing on the digital side. It failed. It broke my heart when TBD went away, I guess about six months ago, but they had the guts to try it, and the same culture has given me the ability to do some things a little differently. So I'm going to go through uh, April 27th and how we try and communicate this in different ways. Prior to the event, uh, the blog, and I guess that's kind of old school now, but that is still our primary way of communicating weather with Joe Q Public when we're not on television. And that's most of the time. I'm on television three times a day for two minutes. That's six minutes. We're up there telling a very short story. And uh, we were able to develop a site called AlabamaWX.com. It does not look like the TV website. It does not have the same domain name. It is not the same content management system. It's a WordPress blog with a pretty decent little theme. But we started, uh, pro, you know, I say promoting. We, we started trying to hit this event pretty early. This was April the 22nd, and we indicated that the, and this was the Friday, I believe, before the Wednesday. And at that point, we knew that it looked bad. The truth is that early in the game, you can't be specific, but it was clearly a setup for violent, long-track tornadoes. And we need to communicate that fact. Uh, then as we got closer, this is April 25th. This is the Monday before the Wednesday. Again, it was hit pretty hard that Monday. Um, of course, the following day um, looked pretty bad. One of the various severe weather parameters we use is the STP, the significant tornado parameter. Computer models headed off the scale. Anything over a one really is significant. And I think Jim Stefkovich, my friend with the weather service, went through the meteorology, and I'm not really here to do that, but I'm just telling you that, that all of the parameters, and I like to use about 65, and they were almost all in place for this event. And what's, what's amazing, though, sometimes everything is in place, and then you don't get anything that happens significant. You never know. But with that kind of stuff, you had to really raise the flag. So we tried to use that blog in 
a powerful way in the days before that. The blog is very highly trafficked. I, I, goodness, I, uh, the, the metrics are growing at an exponential rate, and it's just a weather blog. Uh, but, but the day of the event, let me just say this. It was a very unusual situation. Uh, in fact, let me back this thing up because I want to talk about what happened that morning. You know, we had a morning round and an evening round. We, I did not handle the morning round very well. Shame on me. Uh, that night before, I was not able to tell people that we're going to have a round of severe weather that will be very, very, very significant and life-threatening at 5 o'clock in the morning. There is so much we don't know. The greatest thing missing in my science is humility. And I think a lot of us had a dose of that after that. The morning event was a disaster. Five people died. We had a quarter million people with no power. It totally left us crippled for the afternoon event. That was the big show. So that's something we're going to, I'm going to go back and try and see what happened. Now, the warnings were good. The, the short-term warnings for the morning storms were very good. And again, it's a reminder that we've got to get, get better with disseminating the warning information away from television. I'm pretty outspoken on sirens. In my opinion, they ought to be taken down and burned because we have this siren mentality. Everybody in the state thinks you're supposed to hear a siren before a tornado, and you can't hear those things in a house or a business or a building or a church or a synagogue. You can't. It's some 50s air raid siren technology, and we've got so many better ways with technology today of disseminating information. But having said that, let's move on to the big event. It is true that most people get the information off television. First tornado of the day was in Coleman. Uh, these cameras are internet delivered. Uh, back in 2000, we had a large tornado in Tuscaloosa. We had a tower cam video of it, but we had no control. We, this system was kind of designed for us in 2003, and this was the first tornado of the day. And, and when that happened, uh, uh, we knew that it was going to be a horrible day. But I'll say this. This came right through downtown Coleman. This was 3 o'clock. This was two hours before Tuscaloosa, three hours before Birmingham. And the initial reports, the damage was severe. This is a bad situation, but nobody died. And I'm thinking, okay, this is going to work. And please understand, television is the primary method of dissemination for severe weather today. I'm not trying to suggest any of these other methods are, should overtake this because that's crucial, but we've got other ways of disseminating that video as well that we'll talk about. But that was the first one of the day, about 3 o'clock. And I'm t I have not really looked at a lot of this. Uh, that camera is on the water treatment tower just east of downtown Coleman. If I were to let that go long enough, you would see the tower adjacent to First Baptist Church that houses a low-power television antenna uh, snap. And I didn't even notice it on the air because I was focused on some incoming traffic, but uh, that in itself was amazing. So that was the Coleman tornado at 3 o'clock. And then we had the uh, Tuscaloosa tornado, and, and radar is a wonderful technology, but one of the things that's enhanced radar, it's the spotters. And Jim Stefkovich, if he were here, he'd say the same thing. We don't have enough spotters. Radar is wonderful, but that radar beam is not on the ground, it's aloft. The radar beam goes in a straight line, the earth curves. Obviously, with signatures like that, we have to issue a tornado warning, there's no doubt about that, but we need more people on the ground. And fortunately now, with the dash cams, we were able to uh, do that. John, John Olshu, by the way, was a hero in my mind. He was the guy down in this segment of Tuscaloosa County around Ralph and Foster's with a dash cam and had it live. Uh, and I think people will react when they see it live on television as opposed to seeing it on radar. That stuff is mumbo-jumbo to a lot of people. So I think John was a hero. But again, this was when it came through Tuscaloosa. And, and again, uh, this was the camera that's on top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. And listen... Uh, I moved to Tuscaloosa and I was in the fifth grade. Look at all the uh, stuff a little place called around. Greenville. That, that, By the way, that's a whole oak tree you see falling uh, out of the side of that thing. Uh, this breaks my heart. Nobody should be out there. Um, this thing is going to be coming basically. This has been really Scotland. hard. This is an extremely um, violent situation. Notice but you, the power the, flashes. Again, I, I don't, I'm not here to show you this video and, and to, you know, do the ooh-ah factor, but I'm just saying that television worked, I think, Tuscaloosa. as good as it's going to work. Uh, this is some of the video from John Brown. John is one of our trained sky watchers, and again, he had a dash cam going at the same time. Um, I, I had to check this video before I showed it. I, I was in Pleasant Grove, and I showed this, and I had the wrong segment in... It was a human body that was aloft when John had zoomed into a segment of this. Let me tell you something, that part of this thing is going to be taken out. File, gone. It's out. Um, there's a lot of things we have to be real careful of here. But again, we were, you know, that stuff goes on television. People will react, I think. And the struggle we all have is why did all these people die? 240. 
with all these warnings, the, the lead time, I don't know if Jim's in the room here, that the lead time had to be at least 25 minutes for all of these things, and the Weather Service did a tremendous job this day. Um, that was the uh, storm coming up on Birmingham. There's the debris ball, and there's the velocity couplet. Again, this, this is classic textbook stuff. This was a generational event. You will not see this happen again in your lifetime, more than likely. That's a coming through Birmingham. That video shot in the city federal building downtown. At the time, it was coming. It had just come through Pleasant Grove. It was approaching That's Fultondale. And um, again, at this point, this thing was rain wrapped. You, you don't see the classic look like we had in Tuscaloosa because of the rain. Most Alabama tornadoes are rain wrapped, and they happen at night. We have hills and we have trees, and you can't see them that well. This is Bill Castle's flyover in Tuscaloosa. And again, I'm going to skip a lot of this to save time, but uh, that stuff is, uh, to this day, it, it just uh, it breaks my heart. This was my life. I lived there. The churches, the schools. That thing came right by the little concrete block radio station on 15th Street where I worked for Burt Bank playing rock and roll music on the radio. Played Leonard Skinner and the Carpenters all within one hour. It was the most bizarre job in the world. But for a high school kid, I learned how to communicate. And the little building survived. Uh, but uh, across the street at Forest Lake, it was pretty bad. But in, here's the deal, guys. In addition to TV, this is some of the stuff we did in... in I, this is important. People say, why do you use Ustream? It's got those tacky commercials and, you know, it's cluttered. And the reason we use Ustream, it's universal. And by the way, at one point, and I, we, I have not gotten the final numbers. At one point, we had over 30,000 concurrent people watching the stream. I think the total during the session was over 100,000. Uh, the reason we like Ustream, it's encoded in Flash and H.264. Whether you've got an Android phone or an iPhone, you can watch it. And most of these crappy TV websites, can I say that here? I tell you, I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> They're horrible. They're cluttered. It goes for all of them. The video is flash only. If you've got an iPhone, you can't watch it. I want it to be universal. I, I, I don't care what you have. I want it to be universal. And at least they offer that. And how many times? I wish I could show you these emails from these people that were huddled up in the middle of their basement or a closet or bathroom watching that stuff that you just saw, not on television, but on their smartphone or on their iPad, on Ustream. And people all over the world that had kids in Tuscaloosa and relatives. And, uh, and also, of course, it's available not only through the Ustream app, but also the various TV station apps, which is wonderful. That was huge. Let me tell you what. I told our engineers, that stream is important as both transmitters, 33, 40, Internet. They are crucial. You cannot put any one priority over another one. The, the Facebook thing has worked out very well. Uh, and I kind of had critical mass going into this. And I think the, the, the fact is, is I try and respond to people. The thing that I don't understand, so many media people, they say, I've got a Facebook page and I've got a Twitter account. And, and, and then they don't, they don't respond. I don't understand that. Broadcasting is a conversation. And I've had so many pe news people over the years talk about all oh, their, their audience are idiots. They're not idiots. They're our friends. They're precious people. I've gathered so much information from, from these people. It's just fantastic. And I think that engagement is the reason the numbers are fairly high. Uh, and we put automated warnings. I put automated warnings. And this is my Facebook like page, not the stations. And I do that because I, I just think that it will work better in a Facebook application of doing automated warnings. And it's a long process. If you want to know how, I'll tell you later. I don't have time today. Uh, we embed the Ustream video within that Facebook page so people can watch the live coverage from that. And again, it is an incredible source for me of getting weather information. Not only are we pushing it, we're gathering it. And those reports are critical. And then on the, uh, on the Twitter side, uh, I think the numbers are like over 25,000 now. Um, the warnings are done manually. I don't do automated warnings. To me, Twitter feeds that have all the automated stuff, it's just, I don't like it. If you watched what I did, I can type and talk. There's a lot of things I can't do, <laughs> but I can type and talk. And, and I type tornado emergency, Tuscaloosa, Norway. Go back and look at my, go, go search the span. Twitter feed, tornado emergency, Tuscaloosa and Northport, tornado emergency for Cullman, tornado emergency for Cordova, in all caps, screaming at people. And I think they got that. And um, again, the, the updates were there from time to time. Boy, it's hard reading this thing backwards. <laughs> uh, and it was another great source of reports. And I, I respond to people. I, I, I saw a TV guy the other day. I'm not going to say his name. He said, I have 500 followers on Twitter. Guess how many people he was following? Zero. 
What are you telling people? You're telling them you're a jerk. You, 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 you demand <laughs> that they... <laughs> Oh, boy. I'm going down in flames. But you're telling them, you're going to listen to what I say, but I'm not going to listen to what you have to say. You're not important. I think it should be the opposite. The people have the power, not us. We are totally powerless, and I like it that way. So I respond. And, and, and again, the, the amazing thing about the social... And by the way, those are some of the uh, tweets, uh, and that's just... I typed those while I was on the air. And I thought people would see that, and that's important. In the days after, this is what I didn't see coming. Uh, using those streams for relief, coordinating relief efforts. Uh, I don't know why me. I, I guess it's because I have critical mass. There was a real nice article that Corey Bergman wrote on Lost Remote saying I got all these people more. I, I don't know. I, I, you know. I'm just trying to engage people. And, but yet I built up all those big numbers, and uh, I think that Twitter and Facebook you know, were very important. All these people had needs. And there's people in places you probably never heard of. Sawyerville in Hale County. You know, the national media, they weren't there. Initially, Shoal Creek over there near Asheville and Ragland, nobody was there. Webster's Chapel, Goshen, the same place hit in 1994 during the Palm Sunday outbreak. Nobody was there, and the needs were just critical, and it was like nobody was monitoring. It was just chaos, and if I could push this stuff out to 80,000 people that are engaged and are paying attention, maybe it'll get attention, and it did. And, and we started using that tag. Just I thought the We Are Nashville was cool. I, I stole it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, when, when their flood happened last year, I thought We Are Nashville is just classy. So I just, I love this state. It's hard, y'all. I had to talk to every kid at Hackleburg, K through 12. Pleasant, I don't even want to talk about it because it's very emotional. But I, I love this state. And I just think it's a statement that we are Alabama. We'll be okay. We'll come back. Jamie had the great idea of doing the haves and the needs. And we created these hashtags. And uh, the Facebook thing worked very well as well. But, but i got to stop here, guys, because I have to go back to work. But I just want to say that this stuff's not play toy stuff anymore. People used to laugh at me all the time in the newsroom. It's Twitter. You know, that, and, and at first, I didn't get it. Years ago, I try, I'm an early adopter. I got a ham radio license when I was 14. I like to try things early. When I saw Twitter, the first, you know, what am I going to say? I ate a pickle. So I didn't understand it either, you know? <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you've been there. You didn't get it. Or maybe you did. Maybe it's just me. But it, it is powerful in... What we've got to do is get the relief agencies on board. The Red Cross and the Salvation Army, the Alabama Emergency Management, FEMA. It doesn't need to be some TV weather guy coordinating this relief effort with a Twitter stream. It needs to be these folks that are really in that business. And I think they've learned. They've been very responsive, and now they're all there. And they're learning that you just can't get a Twitter account and have you know, 50,000 followers in one day. It takes a long time. It's a process. So uh, I was delighted to see the power of social media at work in a very important function that really helps some people that are suffering in this state. But we, there's a lot we're going to learn about this, and we'll get better. But thank you all for letting me go. My time is up. i got to go back to work. God bless all of you, and thank you very much. <laughs>